We do welcome you back to People and Power here on NBS Always. My name is Mebo Chegmiezake and we return with Professor Ezra Suruma, currently a Chancellor at Macquarie University and of course, like I've mentioned earlier, one of the smartest people that Uganda has had. His calling card reflects in the upheavals of the 1970s at the height of Idi Amin and about clashes. He was one of the founders of the Uganda National Movement, an opposition front opposed to Obote's government, which later merged with Yori Museveni's Uganda Patriotic Movement in the 1980s, which later became the National Resistance Movement. Suruma says he was never born a politician, but the plight of Ugandans in pursuit of freedoms at the time sold his will to politics. I do not have interest in politics. I was strictly uh, academic. When I left my job in uh, Florida and m University in 1979 to come back to my career, I came strictly to teach. I mean, I had been overthrown. That's what had been keeping me away. As soon as he was out of the way, I returned and, and left a secure job, uh, only to find that the situation in Uganda was chaotic shooting in day like that, and now guns would be going off all over the place. And it became intolerable, and we decided it was time to organize and do something about it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. And I hope we contributed to creating a better environment. Mm -hmm. What are some space. of those memories that still stand out when you look back on your life in the 1980s? What stands out most in the 1980s is that I had to flee for my life. Mm -hmm because uh, they wanted to kill me. That stands out a lot. Tell us about that. What exactly happened? What had you done? I joined politics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told you we formed the Uganda Patriotic Movement. Mm -hmm. So when uh, Museven and his group attacked Kabamba and the war began, uh, myself and uh, Joshua Mjeni, my colleague, whom we had started the Uganda National Movement, they sent a military platoon to come and uh, arrest us at Makere. We were both staying in Mutual Hall, but we managed to escape. And uh, so that was uh, definitely a, a narrow escape mm -hmm. because they came and knocked on my door mm -hmm. and uh, a voice said that he's not there. And they believed him. I don't know, I don't know who it was. He's never come forward to tell me. But I feel I escaped very narrowly, there's no doubt. Mm -hmm. From there, I was able to find my way to the United States and stayed there as a teacher in exile until 1997, when, when, uh, when I came back and joined the Central Bank. So then one would wonder, why didn't you continue on to participate in active politics? I, as I said, I was never uh, politically minded. Once. Uh, I, it turned sour, and I was forced to go into exile a second time. Mm -hmm. I'd been exiled during Amin's time. And I went back into exile in Obati's time, um, but always in academia. And, and uh, joining Bank of Uganda was, in a way, continue, as director of research, was a continuation of my academic work, but later on I was promoted. To, to other jobs, and uh, I think I did the best I could in, in them. I don't see any contradiction. I, I, I don't think I'm that political. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hate injustice. Uh, I hate injustice, and I fight in my own way against injustice. The Ugandan economist is a doctor of philosophy in economics from the University of Connecticut. He also has a master's degree in computer science and international banking. His detailed academia has raised him to professor of economics at Macquarie University and Florida A&M University. 1987 saw his breakthrough at the Central Bank as director of research until 1990. From 1990 to 1993, he served as deputy governor, Bank of Uganda. In 1993, he joined Uganda Commercial Bank 
as the chairman and managing director until 1996. In 2005, he was appointed Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, a position he held until 16 February 2009 when he was appointed Senior Presidential Advisor on Finance and Economic Planning. Now, Chancellor of Macquarie University, the highest academic center in the land, the pinnacle of any written book to whom he is the lead character. When you were finance minister, especially like I mentioned earlier, when you were, when you won the award mm -hmm. for Africa's best minister, mm -hmm. would have thought that probably President Museveni would have retained you as minister in other ministries. But then that didn't happen. What is your opinion on that? President has to make a judgment at different times mm -hmm. how to deploy uh, the people under him. And uh, I, he gave me an opportunity, mm -hmm. and I'm very grateful for that opportunity. I'm also glad that I used the opportunity very well, because during the time I was minister, I think Uganda experienced the highest rate of economic growth that has ever been recorded. Uh, reaching more than 10% in, I think, in 19, 2007 or 8. So we did very well. So I'm very grateful for that opportunity. And uh, when I was released, I had an opportunity to go to Brookings Institution, which is, uh, I believe, the best think tank in the world, and spend time there and write a book about my experiences, which I think is a contribution also uh, to, to uh, the literature on Uganda. Now, being senior presidential advisor mm -hmm. to the president, there's usually the debate that there's so many presidential advisors, but mm -hmm. it is the president who advises them. <laughs> so I would like to find out from you, how often does the president seek your advice and actually effect it in any given an way that you might give it. An advisor is an advisor. Uh, even when you are a minister of uh, a particular portfolio, um, the fact that you, you are the minister of that area doesn't mean that the president will take your advice mm -hmm. or your recommendation. You serve at his discretion. And uh, when you advise, you, you are listened to, and then you may th sometimes uh, you may think that your advice has not been taken. But you will be surprised to find two, three years from now that what you advise is actually being done. Sometimes we underestimate <laughs> uh, the influence that we have uh, on the world. Uh, I may say some things here that appear unimportant, but there may be someone out there who hears the words and they have an impact on him and they actually affect their lives. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, my cousin who said, that people become uh, clever by reading books. The impact on me was enormous. So how often does he call you in? Does he call in I all of you as presidential advisors? <laughs> that is between me and him. Okay. Yeah. So you can't even give us a, an example of how it happens. If no, it's I, I presidential can't. advisors, all of you at I, once, I do many or one in particular. I'll be asked to represent him in a forum, I'll be asked to do all sorts of things. I might be called at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning to give, uh, to do something. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it varies greatly from, I think, advisor to another. All right. Yeah. Have you been tested before? Has there been a situation where you... Temptation is continuous. Mm -hmm. Temptation is continuous. Uh, people want to bribe you, people who want to uh, sign the wrong thing. Can you tell us about that? One of those incidents when you felt like you were threatened? I, I wouldn't say threatened. Mm, what would you tempted. call it? Tempted? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think there was, I remember somebody who offered me to sign something and I would get 300,000 United States dollars and I told them to get lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was that the only time? Would you say that That's was... That's just one instant. You asked mm -hmm. me for an instant. Hey, you can... <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you can give us another yeah. one. <laughs> I did, uh, when you are in Minister of Finance, where I was, mm -hmm. or in the Bank of Uganda, or wherever, mm -hmm. there, there are continuous pressures. 
Of course, when people know that you are not likely to, to, to bend, to, they try to find the smooth ways of, of getting around you. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think people probably came to know that that wouldn't work with me. Mm. And uh, they decided to, to, to be friends and leave me alone. It might not be easy to make a name at the beginning. Of course, a name that exudes positivity in society. Your name is known for high integrity. You're considered as one of the smartest people in this country. But how do you maintain that positivity and keep your name clean? I don't know. Uh, it, it's it's uh, always a challenge. We know that the world in which we live uh, is there's good and evil in the world. And you could see, say that the two are in conflict, they're at war mm -hmm. with each other. And the human being is a battleground between good and evil. And balancing your life so that the good exceeds the bad is not a simple thing. How have you done it? Um, it, it it's uh, the grace of God. I wouldn't say I have done it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a struggle every day that, that goes on every day to, to, to do the good thing, uh, to love more than to hate, to smile more than to, to grimace. You're sounding like a preacher right now. Yes, uh, because, <laughs> because that, that's what it's about. It's about the struggle. Mm -hmm. It's a struggle in everyone uh, between good and evil. We're all in that struggle. There, there are no exceptions. Mm -hmm. And society, of course, is attempting to, to through law, laws, our representatives, we are choosing representatives, mm -hmm. to go and make just laws that will keep our society stable and good and progressing. Isn't that what it's all about? Mm -hmm. So at, at the individual level, and at the community level, and the national level, we are all involved in this struggle of being good and doing what is right.